Chefs, I am Ms. Jerica Sorel, your Cook 005 Egg Dishes, Cereal and Start Dishes Preparation Teacher for this school year. And welcome to my classroom. For today, we are going to discuss about the tools, utensils, and equipment needed in preparing egg dishes. But before that, let me ask you this question. Why do you think it is important to clean and sanitize kitchen tools and equipment? Do you know the procedure involved in manual and mechanical dishwashing? How about the appropriate tools and equipment used in preparing egg dishes? So during our lesson, we are going to discuss the steps in cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. We will identify the various types of kitchen tools and equipment needed in egg preparation. And we will identify the uses of kitchen tools and equipment. So, are you ready? Before we proceed, let me discuss to you the definition of tools, utensils, and equipment. Any physical item that is used to achieve a goal but is not consumed during this process can be defined as tools. Informally speaking, it can also be used to describe a specific procedure with specific purpose as well. While a small handheld tool used for food preparation is called utensils. Common kitchen tasks include cutting food items into size, heating food on an open fire or on a stove, baking, grinding, mixing, blending, and measuring, different utensils are made for each task. While the idea of equipment represents to all sorts of machinery, functional devices, or accessories which helps cooking effectively quick. Now, get a closer look in your kitchen and find an example of tools, utensils, and equipment. Now that you know the definition of kitchen tools and equipment, let's take a closer look about the cleaning and sanitizing. In the preparation of egg dishes, the first consideration is to identify the needed tools and equipment and how to clean and sanitize them after each use. Cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment must be a part of the standard operating procedure that make up your food safety program. But cleaning and sanitizing is not the same. When we say cleaning, it is the removal of visible soil which you need to use soap and water while sanitizing means reducing the number of harmful microorganisms by using very hot water or a chemical sanitizing solution. There are many cleaning products or agents and a variety of equipment in the market. You just need to choose the best for your workplace and follow the instructions in the label. Remember this, surfaces that look clean may still have germs you cannot see. Now let us proceed in discussing about the wear washing. When we say wear washing, it means it is the process of washing and sanitizing dishes, glassware, flatware, pots and pans either manually or mechanically. There are two types of wear washing. The first one is manual washing, which uses a three compartment sink and is used primarily for pots and pans. It may be used for dishes and flatware, but in a small operation zone. There are steps to be followed in doing the manual washing. Step number one, wear rubber gloves. If you have dry hands or other skin problems, Roll up your sleeves if you are wearing long sleeves or put them under your gloves and wear an apron too. Scrape all the large pieces of food and place it in a garbage bin. Stack the dishes in the proper order named glassware, silverware, chinaware, and utensils. Stack them to the right of the sink so that work progresses from right to left. Next step, fill the sink with water and add the considerable amount of detergent. The hotter the water, 
the better it's sanitizing and discarding properties. But use tolerable heat, around 66 degrees Celsius or 150 degree Fahrenheit or above. So not to scald yourself, use rubber gloves. Wash the lightest soiled items first. Start with the glasses, cups, and flatware. Soak each piece individually and rinse in hot water. Wash the plates, bowls, and serving dishes. Soak each piece gently. Wash pots and pans last. Soak them first. Wash the pans thoroughly and don't forget to clean the bottom too. After washing the dishes, lay your dishes out on the rock to air dry them or wipe them with a clean towel. There should be no visible matter and no greasy feel. Run a hand over the dish to ensure that they are thoroughly cleaned. Rinse out brush, sponge, and allow to dry. Sterilize your equipment, often using boiling water. When a sponge or brush starts to smell unpleasant, throw it away. Wipe down the sink and your tools. Wipe down the sink, dish drainer, and dish pan. Any rags, dish cloths, or sponges need to be left out to air dry or thrown into the washing machine. Remember to replace sponge and rags frequently. Now let us proceed to the second type of wear washing, which is what we call the mechanical wear washing. Mechanical wear washing requires a dishwashing machine capable of washing, rinsing, and drying dishes, flatware, and glassware. There are also steps that needs to be followed in doing the mechanical washing. The first one is you need to load it up. Fill your dishwasher logically. Don't crowd the dishes. Fill your dishwasher full but not crumb. Add detergent. Fill the detergent dispenser with cleanser, either liquid or powder, and close it. Turn it on. Set the timer as necessary. A shorter time for lightly soiled dishes or a longer time for heavily soiled pots, pans, and dishes. Dry the dishes. You can use heated dry, but be careful of plastic dishes or containers, or use air drying. Now, let's take a look in this video and note down the important things that needs to remember. Manual dishwashing, three sink dishwashing method. There should be a sink for each of the following tasks, wash, rinse, and sanitize. There should also be room to scrape, rinse, and drain, dry the dishes. These areas are typically found at the beginning and end of dishwashing line. Make sure scrape, pre-rinse, and draining area are clean and free of debris. Scrape and pre-rinse dishes to keep water cleaner longer. Change water often, especially the wash and rinse sinks. Do so when the water falls below proper temperature or chemicals are no longer effective. Air dry dishes whenever possible to minimize cross-contamination from dirty cloths. If necessary, to dry by hand, ensure drying towels are clean and dry and change frequently. Fill sinks to proper recommended minimum temperature. 1. Wash 110 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. 43 to 49 degrees Celsius. 2. Rinse. Same or slightly lower than wash temperature. 3. Sanitize. 171 degrees Fahrenheit. 77 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. Check water chemical pH balance regularly. Food safety program starts with the standard operating procedures of cleaning and sanitizing tools and other utensils to be prepared in cooking food, particularly in egg. Improper cleaning and sanitizing of tools may allow harmful microorganisms to be transferred from one food to another. Now let us proceed in discussing about the tools, utensils, and equipment used in preparing egg dishes. Using appropriate kitchen tools and equipment is a great help in maintaining the cleanliness or orderliness in the workplace. For 
Avon Cuddler A small cup made of porcelain with a screw on top which is submerged in simmering water until the egg is cooked. Eggs can be eaten directly from the cuddler. An electric appliance which steams or cook eggs in the shell with inserts or cups for steam poached eggs or flat inserts for cooking fried or scrambled eggs and omelets is called egg cooker. A crepe pan is a skillet which is shallow and slope sided and is 6 to 8 inches in diameter. Crepes can also be cooked in any small shallow pan with sloping sides such as an omelette pan. A custard cups, small deep individual bowl shaped dishes with a capacity of 6 or 10 ounces designed for oven use and perfect for baking, individual custards, or cliches. A non-stick shallow, slope-sided skillet usually 7 to 10 inches diameter is called omelette pan. Double omelette pan consists of two shallow, rectangular, or semicircular pans attached by hinges. Each pan has a handle. An egg piercer, a sharp pointed tool used to gently prick a very small hole in the large end of an eggshell before hard boiling. The purpose of this is to allow some air to escape and some water to sip into the egg during cooking which make peeling easier. A covered pan containing a plate with shallow cups in each of which an egg can be cooked over steam rising from boiling water at the bottom of the pan is called poacher. Couché dish. It is also called a flan or tart dish, which is round, shallow dish, scalloped edges intended for oven use. A round bun with or without a handle to hold a fried poached egg during cooking is what we call egg ring. Separator, a small cup used to separate egg white from yolk. Wedger, a tool which holds the hard-boiled egg upright and cuts it into six equal wedge-shaped parts as you pull the wires over it. As the name implies, they prevent eggs from sticking and are super easy to clean. An ideal tool for cooking eggs on stovetop is what we call Teflon pan or a nonstick pan. A whisk used to scramble super fluffy eggs or stiffen egg whites for meringue. Spatulas. There are two types of spatulas for flipping and for scraping. A flipping spatula is perfect for flipping fried eggs and pancakes. While scraping, it can either be wooden or rubber depending on their use. Measuring cups. A kitchen utensils used in measuring liquid or bulk solid cooking ingredients such as flour or sugar. Measuring spoon. Used to measure an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry when cooking. Kitchen equipment. An oven. A chamber or compartment used for cooking, baking, heating, or drying. A handheld mixer which usually comes with various attachments including a whisk attachment for whisking cream, batters and egg whites, and sugar is what we call electric mixer. And the last one, a kitchen appliance where you store food at a cold temperature is what we call refrigerator. Everyone has heard the saying, the right tool for the right job or you are only as good as your tools, right? Well, these sayings are very true when it comes to the choice and the use of cooking equipment. So that's it for today. 
I hope you learned something from my presentation. Do you have any questions? If you do, please DM me to my official Facebook account, Jerica ARQ Surel. So I'll see you soon then. Goodbye! Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Go Teach. One proud Olivarian.